Let's get more formal with the definition of limits. The definition of a limit is if I'm given a function f, which is defined for all x near some value a, except perhaps right at a, and if I'm given a limit l such that f of x is arbitrarily close to l for all x sufficiently close to that value a, then I can say the limit of f of x as x approaches a equals l. This is it written out in words. This is using mathematical notation. Let's start off by finding limits graphically. Here's a function f of x. It's a crazy function, but it's going to help us explain a bunch of different situations. Again, I made this using Desmos. If I asked you to find the following, that is f of negative 4 and the limit as x approaches negative 4 of f of x, I think I'd get the same answer for both of these. That's simply this point. That point is directly on the line, and at x equals negative 4, f of negative 4 is simply equal to 4. Likewise, the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 4 is also equal to 4. Let's look at some other examples. If I ask you to find f of negative 2, from the graph you can see that although that curve goes down to 0, if I plug in negative 2 for x, I actually get the value 4. The limit, however, as x approaches negative 2 for f of x is different. As I get arbitrarily close to negative 2 from the left, it looks like f of x goes to 0. As I get arbitrarily close to negative 2 from the right-hand side, f of x is also going to 0. So the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2 is actually equal to 0. So the limit and what the function value is at that point are not always the same number. Let's say I took away that point. If that point was not there, then f of negative 2, well that ends up being undefined. However, the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2, that doesn't change at all. That is still equal to 0 because again, as we approach from the left and as we approach from the right, f of x approaches 0. What we've been talking about so far are limits. Limits have to exist from both the left hand and the right hand side and they have to equal the same number. But we can talk about one-sided limits, that is right-sided limits and left-sided limits. A left-sided limit is from the left of the point A or from the negative side of A. A right-sided limit that comes from the right hand side of A or the positive side of A. The notation we use for left-sided limits is x approaches a and then a negative sign in where we usually put an exponent. The right-sided limit, it's as x approaches a and we have a positive sign in the exponent position. Again, the negative means the left side or the negative side and the plus means the positive side or the right-hand side. Let's look at a couple of examples. So, my number 7 up here says the limit is f of x as x approaches 0 from the left-hand side. As x approaches 0 from the left-hand side, it looks like f of x approaches the value 4. As f of x approaches 0 from the right-hand side, it looks like f of x approaches the value 2. Notice if I look at the value at 0, f of 0 is actually equal to 0, which is neither the left-handed limit or the right-handed limit, and that can happen. However, to talk about what the limit of f of x is when x approaches 0, without saying the plus or the minus, that means we have to talk about the actual definition of a limit a little bit more. A limit as x approaches a only exists if, and only if, the limit from the left-hand side and the limit from the right-hand side is the same value l. Therefore, the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x does not exist. Sometimes that's abbreviated as dne. I've done two more examples. The limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the positive side is about 1.4. From the negative side is 2, whereas f at 2 is equal to 2. It happens to be one of the limits. We can also find limits from a table. I think finding limits from a table is really pretty straightforward. If you look at this table for the function of 1 minus square root of x divided by 1 minus x, it's pretty easy to say that the limit of f of x as x approaches 1, because if I let x equal 1, the denominator would be equal to 0, and therefore it would be undefined. 
but it looks like that is actually equal to 0.5. Again, this is based on the table of values I'm given. Sometimes, though, it's easy to run into trouble if you only rely on a table. For instance, if I'm looking at the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of 1 over x, the first couple values of x, things look like they're approaching the number negative 1. But if I go a little bit closer, suddenly my values jump up to almost positive 1. Let's look at a graph of this. Here's the function f of x is equal to cosine of 1 over x. It certainly looks like crazy things are happening around 0. Let's zoom in a little bit. Zooming in like this doesn't seem to help that much. Maybe if we zoom in more. That doesn't look much better. Let's zoom in one final time. I'm going to say it does not look like, even if we get really, really close to 0, I mean, look, we're at 0. 0.0002 at this point, it doesn't look like this is going to settle to one particular value. In fact, it looks like it just bounces back between negative 1 and 1. That means the limit of this does not exist because it doesn't settle to a single number L. So even though the first couple values of the table looked promising, it turns out that the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of 1 over x simply does not exist.